Yeah, that's what I've been saying since we crashed landed on this island is that does not become a hand. Welcome to season six where we're phoning it in. You don't think critically and then put a pop tart into your body. I am highly caffeinated and minorly concussed. Aruga, aruga. What came first, the love sack or the gravity gun? It's my turn to do a sin with Sonic. This is for the freaks. <laughs> Too much piss. That's the kind of bad decisions we like to hear about. Let me a sleepy ass bat. How much shrimp can you fit in your mortal body? You told me you guys would be cool. That's season six intro material right there. Hello, and welcome to Debate This, a show where no one is right, but someone is definitely wrong. In this time, we take time out of our bit. Doing great. I get one. Doing great. Everybody, Everybody gets, gets one. one. In this show, we take time out of our busy adult lives to talk about comic books, video games, and I didn't write something here because I've, only write been playing, here. <laughs> because I've only been playing Legend of Zelda Tears of the Kingdom because it's a really fucking good game. And you get to a certain point and you're like, oh, I bet I've seen everything that this game has to offer. And then you're like, oh, there's another game under this other game. It's really good. <laughs> I'm playing through Breath of the Wild finally, and I am in awe of how big that map is. And knowing that Tears of the Kingdom's map is three times as big Yeah, is almost daunting. Uh, three times is probably disingenuous because the sky portion, spoilers, we're going to spoil a little Tears of the Kingdom very lightly. The sky portion is not nearly as big as the other two portions. But but still, okay. it is two more and than a half double. times. Yeah, bigger. it's more than it double. Still very daunting. Yeah, is the making a kaiju monster using futuristic tech part a big part of the game? Does that make the yeah, game? Yeah, is that bigger? in the sky or the underground part? The answer yeah. is yes. <laughs> How many koroks have you crucified, Andrew? Just one. I did. I did uh, <laughs> strap a korok to a cross. And then uh, I slowly, I hitched him on a wagon to my horse and I slowly trotted through the city streets. Well, you know what they say, everybody gets one. Everybody gets one. How far into the game do I have to play before I get a glider and bombs and play Fortunate Son as I fly over Hyrule? Well, the thing is, you can do that very quickly, but you can't do it for very long because you have to invest in like battery power. So oh. you can do all of those things, but it'll last a half a second. What part of my description made you think that I was in here for a long time? <laughs> yeah, exactly. <laughs> well, y'all, speaking of The Legend of Zelda, four years ago, if you can believe it, the debate this team made national headlines when a plane that only the four of us were on crash landed on a deserted island, and we, for whatever reason, had to pick one item from any Legend of Zelda game to survive. Now, fortunately, we all escaped, as we all remember, thanks to a scheme concocted by Kyle, who just so happened to bring a big old Korok leaf from the Wind Waker. So thanks, Kyle. You're welcome. Yeah. Now, it's been four whole years since the day we escaped off that island, and since then, we've reflected on what we learned during our time on the island and spent these past years really righting all the wrongs and making up for lost time. And it's safe to say that we're all better off today for it. Is it? Are we? Can you prove that? <laughs> I, don't, I, I can't. I can't prove that. Well, doesn't matter because bad news, guys. It's time to wake up and realize oh, we never got off of that island. I'm doing uh, a lost thing. It's yeah. a lost. Uh, it was all Hurley's uh -huh. dream. Yeah. God. Uh, can we not? Wait. Can we just Can we just reskin this episode as something nope, different? It's already done. I already wrote the Please. notes. Please. As I stare up at the blazing sun above and groggily look to my left and to my right, I see the following alongside me. Todd, a traveling merchant with the strength of an ox, Thomas, Matt, everyone's favorite fishman boyfriend, Cole, and Kyle, a hapless assistant who thinks basic physics is magic, Harper. Basic physics are magic, Andrew. <laughs> <laughs> I've got something to say here real quick. I read through these notes earlier. One of these names have changed. Yeah. You referenced the, the, old, the old mommy at yeah. one point. I referenced the old mommy because I was misremembering <laughs> Paya the Sheikah as the one who was like a kid, but Paya was not the one who was a kid. Paya was like the notice me senpai yeah. woman in Breath of the Wild, which I didn't have the strength or mental fortitude to type something different about Pia, so I changed it to talk about Prince Sidon, everyone's boyfriend, everyone's fishman boyfriend. Cool. Prince Sidon <laughs> rules. Um, yeah, I, he does. I'm at that part of Breath of the Wild now, and yeah. I want him to follow me around on all of on the rest of the adventure. He's the best. My favorite character in Tears of the Kingdom is a character they added called Addison, who he's a man with a helmet for a haircut. He's got a purple helmet haircut, and he shows up 
holding this big clunky wooden sign because he loves his boss so much and he wants to advertise his boss's company so much and he's so dedicated. What? And you find him you find him standing out in the rain out on top of a mountain just like holding up signs and he and then uh you glue two planks of wood next to it and let the sign stick on itself stand up for itself and it blows his mind every time. Just recent like Nintendo releases, they've really leaned into like male NPCs are all weird guys and mm-hmm. <laughs> it's perfect like i mean zelda's always kind of been weirdos and himbos though mm. yeah but like they're, they feel like leaning they're leaning into, into it. it more and they, they're they leaning into yeah. it in the pokemon franchise more as well yeah it's like creeping into mario too it's That's fair. it's great like yeah. just more weird dudes as our yeah. npcs please well how many different characters in either ocarina of time or majora's mask male characters when you talk to them had the voice line of ooh like a <laughs> non variation amount, yeah. of ooh yeah. was always what they did. That's a trope of this of the franchise now at this point. Mm-hmm. I think one led to the other. Yeah. 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 All right guys. Well maybe this time things will be different. Now last time we were only thinking linearly, really limiting ourselves to just one item from Zelda. So let's take a page out of Tears of the Kingdom's notebook and instead glue one item from The Legend of Zelda to a different item from The Legend of Zelda. (laughs) Okay. Tell me, y'all, what two items are you fusing together? What do those items do separately? What games do they come from? And most importantly, what monstrosity do they create when combined? Todd, we'll start with you. Sure. Much like season three, (laughs) uh, season finale of Lost, we just had to go back. (laughs) <laughs> what we had to do we, i hate we have to go i'm back. so over this <laughs> and i will say last time we were here we were just naive fools just fumbling around an island trying we to were do our pre-writer best. strike season one little babies we were all just innocent <laughs> men <laughs> due to the writer strike which is why we were using content much like loss <laughs> yes we're here now and you know reflecting back we were using hook shots and uh blowing wind around and eating magic protein squares <laughs> Everything's changing this time. You see, fellow survivors, I just so happen to have packed the two most important things that we need to survive. In my right hand, you'll find the Megaton Hammer, made popular in Ocarina Time, and then also it showed up in Soul Calibur and I think Hyrule Warriors as well. <laughs> it was used primarily for smashing the big rock and slaying dragons. You know, it, it was a thing used if, if an item or a, a surface couldn't be destroyed by bombs or fire or whatever, you destroy it with the Megaton Hammer. That's what you use it for. And I gotta say, the jelly to my hammer-shaped peanut butter today is, of course, a Zonai rocket. You see, <laughs> for those of you who have, who have played uh, Tears of the Kingdom or have consumed any TikTok media of Tears of the Kingdom... It's a rocket. It's a rocket (laughs) that normally it would be used to like help lift a thing or move a stationary item. But now we're going to use this rocket and this comically large hammer used for slaying dragons to solve almost any barrier before us. Because you see today, I have built you a rocket hammer, a hammer (laughs) with a rocket (laughs) attached to it. I know there will be questions later about the physics behind this, but I feel like it stands for itself. Here I hold gigantic hammer, rocket attached. I am but a simple traveling hammer (laughs) rocket man. The thing I've always wished I had when I was on like week long Boy Scout wilderness camping trips was a rocket hammer. You're right. That always (laughs) would have just been perfect, Todd. Well, and here's I want to walk you through. So when I was packing for our trip, I was packing and I was like, oh, this is a four day trip. And so. I was going to pack 15 pairs of underwear because, you know, when you pack somewhere, you're like, what if I ship my pants four times every day? And so, yeah, (laughs) that is exactly how I think when I pack for vacation. Right. And I said, instead of that, no, 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 I'm going to pack this comically large hammer and a living (laughs) rocket into my carry on. And here we are. I found actual footage of Todd using his Mm. rocket hammer and uh, put it in the show notes for us all. Good news, listeners. It's a picture of King DDD. (laughs) You know, I will make multiple references of how this item already exists in other games. I didn't think about King DDD. That's on me. Just one more good use of how I'll survive on the island is that. Right. I got to say, I'm really glad that you posted this image, Kyle, because I was going to (laughs) say, like, look, don't give me 
the <sighs> getting a lot of Overwatch vibes from kid who only plays Overwatch. <laughs> but like, right. this is a Reinhardt hammer. Like, you're just doing yeah. a Reinhardt hammer. I'll see you went Reinhardt. You are doing the getting a lot of Overwatch vibes. <laughs> yeah. No, I gave you credit. Don't turn it around on me, you asshole. Oh, man, guys. Terrible news. The two video game references I'm making aren't King DDD or Reinhardt. So this is all new content from here on out. I like to think, so you guys are both thinking of the rocket hammer in the same way, but I like to think the rocket is moved pointing up. So he's just <laughs> using he's just using it to fly around. It's it's like Mary it's like Poppins, Poppins umbrella, yeah. but yeah. <laughs> yeah. But Mary Poppins rocket hammer. Yeah. You know what? You're just answering my questions for me. So mm -hmm. if there's anything sure. else you all can do, you see why I brought these two items. Todd, we have not given you any practical applications for this <laughs> item yet. I we've just shown you examples of other people who use it. One of them being a big dumpy penguin. Oh, okay. two of we them stand... being a big dumpy penguin. Yeah, fact. we we stand big dumpy penguins on this show. <laughs> All right, uh, his his flops are legendary. <laughs> Jesus. All right, Matt. Uh, what's your answer? Yeah. So I must admit, I feel over prepared for this debate <laughs> today. Now let what me explain. While I am typically out of my realm when it comes to Zelda episodes and I still haven't played Tears of the Kingdom, I have been spending my evenings reliving the highlights of spring 2002 by rewatching Survivor Marquesas. <laughs> and you know, I've been watching that on pick your favorite streaming service. But now today, as I blaze through vintage Survivor at a rate that can only be described as alarming, I have learned the two most crucial things one needs to make life work on a deserted island. Those two things are a way to get stuff you can't reach and a way to light stuff on fire. That is why today, when I reached into the Legend of Zelda toy chest, I pulled out the hook beetle from Skyward Sword and the mirror shield, but specifically the one from Majora's Mask with the freaky looking face on the front of it. <laughs> That is the better mirror Major shield. The mirror shield's been in a lot of games. Yeah. The mirror shield is a staple yeah. Yeah. of the franchise. Yes. Yeah, an easy choice. You're right, Kyle. <laughs> what was that for? <laughs> I don't know what Kyle said that for. It's weird and rude. <laughs> Let's examine these two items separately. The hook beetle is a wonderful little device found in the Lanayru Desert. It's worn upon the forearm like a Yu-Gi-Oh! dual disc and then can be launched from its gauntlet as a pilot drone with grabby hands. Through some divine magic, the user's consciousness transcends time and space to control the beetle from its POV, and it can both pick things up and put them down. It's Mage Hand. Yeah, it's Mage Hand. Mm -hmm. You invented yeah. Mage Hand. Well, I didn't. Nintendo <laughs> did. <laughs> the mirror shield is, as its name suggests, both a mirror and a shield. Webster's Dictionary. <laughs> <laughs> it also has the horrifying visage of a Goron trine and failing to resist the call of the void. <laughs> Luckily, these embossed... The last part. <laughs> huh? What? These <laughs> embossed features are purely cosmetic and don't hinder the shield's ability to redirect and focus light. And when combined, they form a pilotable tractor beam, which will define my existence here on this deserted island. You made a death ray. You a death ray. I think you said tractor beam. I think you meant death ray. Hey, you might be right. It's a death ray. <laughs> <laughs> okay. I have so many questions, but much like season three of Lost, I feel like I'm not going to get answers. No, mm -hmm. we're not talking about season three. I'm, I'm talking about season four of Survivor. It's different and better television. Mm -hmm. than Wait, Lost. It, when in season four of Survivor did they have a remote controlled shield that rained down fire upon a the drone team? death ray? Yeah. Well, there was a kite challenge that I watched like two episodes ago. So, Kyle, what's your, what are your, did what Jeff Probst burn? Yeah. In, in yeah, Andrew. Of it? I'm glad you asked. So, Anyone who knows anything about wilderness survival knows the most important thing to consider is actually conservation of energy. The less energy you spend I've heard that. surviving, the more you have to not just survive, but thrive. So I was very fortunate to bring in my carry-on luggage that we salvaged from the plane crash, the double claw shots from Legend of Zelda Twilight Princess and the Titan's Mitts, which are in a number of Legend of Zelda games as well. Also, been the power bracelets from time to time. They're the things that let you lift heavy objects. Yeah, sure. And the double claw shots are 
like the hook shot, but better because there's two of them. <laughs> Wait, didn't we decide in the first one of these episodes that the hook shot was the, not the, hook the shot best answer? Is not good. Yeah, he, we already did that. But you're keep going. bringing back an answer we already determined lost. Mm-hmm. Um, except I'm combining it with something else to make something awesome, Matt. So shut up mm-hmm. and let me cook, okay? <laughs> <laughs> Basically, with the Titan's mitt. And double claw shots. I've made what I affectionately call the Titan Claws. Two gloves that can extend to any length and either grab the thing that I want to grab and bring it to me, no matter how heavy it is, or drag me to it, or take something I'm holding and put it wherever I want it to be, no matter how far away it is. Um, I also still maintain the, like, super strength of the Titan Claws. So I can do all of my foraging, all of my gathering all of my hunting efficiently, quickly, and effectively, and then still have strength and energy left over (laughs) to build a shelter, gather firewood, whatever we may need to survive on this desert island. Yes, I have effectively created improved upon sticky hands, which is amazing. I don't know what you're trying to do by posting the sticky hands because everyone holding sticky hands wishes, man, I wish these could pick up things heavier than a piece of paper, and that's what I've brought here today to the island, because they can pick up anything because of the Titan's mitts. They can pick up anything and then rocket them back at you at an alarming pace. Yeah. Yeah, (laughs) and I can catch it because I have the Titan's mitts. It's part Titan mitt, which lets me carry anything. Your double claw shots have the Titan mitts. I think this is kind of a can the elevator lift the hammer situation. Which I think we all decided was yes, it could. So, yeah, it's not worthy. The image I had, not the sticky hands. I, I had the image of like those things that old people have, like the claw grips. Yes. Yeah. Super yeah. strong claw grips also. Yeah, yeah, yeah. OK, I don't think I would ever describe those as super strong. The ones well, that he's senior saying citizens. Have. I have made them well, super <laughs> strong, Matt. That is what I am telling you. You are ignoring half of the yeah. uh, half of the equation to try and discredit me. Their their claw grips reinforce with tungsten. <laughs> yes. If you put the Titan mitt on one of those old people grabby hands, you'll survive on the island. Is what Kyle is saying. You'll thrive on the island. Because you'll be able <laughs> oh, sorry, to you'll yeah. thrive on yeah. the island. My, we're, thr- we're not mistake. just surviving, Todd. Yeah. We're thriving. You'll Fair. save so much time from surviving that you'll have time for thriving. Yes. Yeah. Yes. If you, <laughs> you, you'll be able to pick up so many durians. <laughs> <laughs> well, having been stranded on this island for four years, I think we all know the most important thing is surviving and thriving. So tell me, each of you, how are you going to live another four years on this island? Nay, thrive another four <laughs> years on this island using your new two things glued together solution. Looking at what we've brought today and thinking back to the three items we brought before, <laughs> I'm confused of how we got here because uh, so as an avid Survivor fan as well, and a minor Maslow's Hierarchy of Needs fan. I know that shelter... <laughs> what? Shelter is key to survival amongst our basic human needs. And thinking about that, I don't know how the Korok flower or leaf was what we decided on in the end. <laughs> but that's not here nor now. You can catch rainwater in your giant leaf, Todd. Unless it blows it all away. <laughs> I think Kyle won because my answer was too stupid. Yeah. Yeah. I think that's right. That's fair. That sounds right. Yeah. Well, anyway, so with this with this rocket propelled hammer that I've I'm wielding just running around, you can knock down literally anything to build your shelter. Oh, but the hammer is too strong. It'll break the trees. You cry. Well, you're wrong. You're wrong for so many levels. So one, <laughs> all meadow trees are known for their durability. So they're not just going to instantly shatter when I hit them with a, a large I'm rocket sorry, propelled. I'm sorry, Todd. Do you know the flora and the fauna of the island that we live upon? Yeah, we're in the island of South Carolina, obviously. <laughs> <laughs> I assume that palm trees are where we're at. And so here we are with this assumption. You know, you can like knock a palm tree over with a stiff breeze, right? It's strong wood, but their root structure is like non-existent. They're pliable. They absorb blows. No, Todd's it's... trying to launch them out into the ocean, so we'd have to go <laughs> swim after them, Matt. I think you're missing the point. Apparently, I, I will have you know, if you look at the flag of South Carolina, it is a palm tree catching a cannonball. 
That is the whole thing. When did it, why is South Carolina involved? Because in you this? brought up South Carolina. I didn't say shit about South Carolina. I did. I'm not taking my science lessons from a flag, from illustrations on a flag. <laughs> That's fair. That's fair. Look, let's go back to science lessons with this rocket propelled hammer. The point is that I'm going to use this rocket propelled hammer to cut down whatever I need to build whatever I need as far as shelter goes. Easy. Just done. Wouldn't a rocket propelled like axe or sword have been better for cutting cutting down trees? Just a normal axe or sword. <laughs> That's a fair point. I would argue this works just as well, but different. And so, okay, so you don't like you don't like the thought of me hammering a tree out at the roots. I get it. It's fine. I don't like the idea of our our precious lumber getting launched into the ocean because you have a <laughs> rocket on a hammer. I'll adjust. I would like my to see angle. you hu- you the human being Todd Thomas right now yeah. try to hammer a tree out by the roots. <laughs> well, I want to see that happen. If it is propelled by ancient technology <laughs> that we cannot fathom, I feel confident that I'm going to have a chance. My other point here. So you say it's too powerful. I get that. I'm going to use that rocket hammer to carve out a cave in the biggest, sturdiest mountain on this here island. And you know what? It's going to be a great cave. I don't know how you're going to make a cave with your shield bug or your grabby hands. But here I am just going to be living the good life. I'm going to be wrecking gonna trees. Be John Henry in the cave out for yeah. us. <laughs> wrecking trees, blowing <laughs> holes in a mountain. I'm going to be hammering all fruit from those trees. I'm going to hammer fish out of the water. It's simple. You're going to hammer fish out of the water? What I don't think that mean? that's the most unbelievable thing I said today. Walk me through it right now. Walk me through how you'll hammer fish out of the water. Okay. In all of the Zelda <laughs> games, if you use any of the numerous oversized hammers, there's always a bit of a shock wave. That will only be magnified when I put a rocket on the end of that hammer, obviously. What are you hitting to generate that shockwave? Same in the water? question. The shallows or or <laughs> the water? follow me on this. Follow me on this. Enough high speed force on the flat plane of the water will still create impact. So I'll just go out in the water and just start hammering. Just make big just old splashes. Just, just big, big, big old splashes. splashes. <laughs> Bring home all the fishes. It's simple. It's effective. I don't know why you're hung up on this. Here, here's, here's where we're at. You need to knock down a barricade on the island? Rocket hammer. You need to destroy a great beast that hunts us in the night? Rocket hammer. You need to travel? Wow. Rocket hammer. You need to find food? Rocket hammer. There is no problem too small and certainly no problem too big that cannot be solved by a rocket powered megaton smashing i guess it's true what they say when all you have is a rocket hammer all of your solutions look like <laughs> nails they're, yeah. they're fish shaped <laughs> <laughs> wow well those are some arguments for sure i feel good about what we said here today <laughs> Yeah, <laughs> I am so proud as I stand here with my <laughs> hammer ablaze with a rocket. If only feeling good about ourselves would help us survive on this island. I don't know where, where positive vibes end up on Maslow's hierarchy of needs because I'm only a minor Maslow's hierarchy of needs fan, but I'm sure it's on there. Uh, Matt. <laughs> yeah, Andrew. Look, I am not going to try and sell you on hammering fish out of the water. I'm also not going to put threat to the structural integrity of the island upon which we live, nor will I be yeeting lumber out into the ocean as I smack it up by its roots. No, Andrew, I have mage hand and a fire starting device. Truly the two most important things (laughs) when surviving on a deserted island. I can get food from any height, from any place. I can acquire it. And also I can... Light fires from any angle with a magnifying glass. Uh, any angle, mm. the sun is shining. Yeah, that's, yeah. That, that's so okay. Good thing Fine. my rocket yes. hammer works even at night. <laughs> <laughs> Todd has not made a lot of good points, but the point that his hammer does work at night is it's a decent fair. one. It's I a point. don't know that I can argue. Yeah, your hammer does work at night, but here's the real thing. So we've all seen 2,000 mega hit blockbuster Castaway. Yes. And we know that Tom Hanks would not have survived on the island. If he hadn't found the volleyball and made a friend. If he hadn't found the volleyball. So that's why (laughs) we got the shield with the weird face. Because like eight years into this island, we're going to need new conversation. (laughs) Oh, you're just Wilsoning the shield. Got it. I am. Well, uh, duplicate use. 
multiple yeah, use. Sure. You can start okay. fire also. You can Wilson the shield. You can yeah. start fire when the sun is out. Yeah. A time when a fire is least yeah. important to have. Kyle, have you watched Survivor? Fire burns through the night, dude. Yeah. I would like to hone in on... Why are you suggesting that the mirror shield can create fire? Is this like a magnifying glass? Or yeah, a magnifying like a solar lens? ray yeah. thing. Yeah. yeah. I mean, that's not like a utility in the games, but I guess I'll allow it. I have honestly not played enough Zelda to tell you whether or not it's a utility in the <laughs> yeah. game or not. But it feels like I can confidently say it has been. I feel like it's been a utility in a game. I mean, it, well, I'm saying I'm confidently saying that it hasn't, but I, but I appreciate that. <laughs> Andrew, I appreciate who has that you, played a lot of Legend yeah. of Zelda games, is saying it has not. Yeah, but I appreciate that you feel like it should. Yeah, exactly. And I appreciate your honesty, <laughs> Matt. How many fires have you personally started with a mirror? Answer the question. Never with a mirror. I've started okay. with a magnifying glass, but not a mirror. Yeah, I know it's possible. It's not. It's not easy. No, I'm not gonna say it's easy. Especially when you're controlling a mm. drone with your mind, I feel like well, yeah, I can just like harder. hold it if I'm doing a fire. Not to make Todd's argument for him, but the the major difference <laughs> here is reflection versus magnification. Yeah, yeah, and and I will say what is easy is swinging a hammer powered by a rocket <laughs> Shut to destroy up. anything that needs to be destroyed. Shut up! Get out of here! Go home! Take your rocket and go home. Your planet. Needs I could. You. I could. I just got to attach it to a different angle of the the hammer. Look, I'm just saying, if you were on a deserted island and had a grabby hand and a thing that it would be difficult, but you could use to start a fire, and also it had a face for you to talk to, you'd be pretty fucking stoked. I'm just saying. I think what Matt is saying is that third up from the bottom on Maslow's hierarchy of needs <laughs> is belonging and love, and he's finding love in the shield. That'll be great. <laughs> Once we've given him like the water and food we have collected, Todd, that'll be really helpful. You're all welcome in my mega cave that I've blown into the side of the mountain on this island. <laughs> wow. What a what a litany of arguments so far. Hey, Kyle, how are you using your, your old people grabby hands? Yeah, Andrew, I'm glad you asked. <laughs> so where Todd and Matt both brought tools for destruction on this island, I have brought two tools for creation. You know, as we're collecting food, I'll be able to just reach up with my hand and grab it and pull it down. If we're building shelter and we need to get things above us to create the shelter you just go whoop, up and there it is <laughs> up high above our heads if we need to pull a boulder out of the way we don't have to like charge up a rocket hammer and smash it you can just reach over super far because of the claw shot and pull it back towards us and then reach out and put it back down wherever it would be useful to us we don't <laughs> have to like try and aim with a hammer because my super strong grabby hands can just put it exactly where we need it I'm just taking our, our normal human hands, the pinnacle of evolution on this planet, and making them better <laughs> by making them stronger and reach further. I don't know a survival situation where that wouldn't be helpful or useful. And yeah, just like throw a throw a situation at me and, and, and I'll tell you how the grabby hands <laughs> make it better. A bunch of rampaging boars threaten your livelihood right now. More yeah. than one, more boom, than two. Boom, you can't grab boom. them both at super once. Super strong grabby hands and punching them away, Todd. Just They're bringing them strong. to you, grabbing them and bringing them closer to you. And then throwing them back away. Oh. See, that's, the, yeah. that's what I take issue with is like, I don't think that the hook shot or the, the double claw, whatever they called it in that game. I don't think that it works both ways. Like, I think it retracts mm -hmm. with force. But I think it's kind of like an alligator, you know, like alligators close their mouths really hard, but they don't have any opening force. Like, I feel like yours pulls really hard, but it doesn't push. Matt, you would be right if you were talking just about the double claw shot. However, I glued the Titan's mitts to it, adding super strength both ways because the Titan's mitt lets you throw super heavy things glued to my double claw shot. I can move super heavy things far away from me as well. I don't think the Titan's mitts allowed you to throw things further. And I feel like if we're going to poo-poo Matt's shield and not say that it can just always light fires, yeah. we can't make up magical powers for your mitts to be able to throw further. However, my rocket hammer works in all these situations. <laughs> <laughs> I'm going to tell you, Todd, you're wrong. Like It does mm. combine with the claw shot and lets me move things far away as well because I can pick it up with my claw shot and pick it up over there and set it down. 
normally. Andrew, can you tell Kyle that thing to you told me earlier about how just because yeah, he wants well, it, it doesn't matter? So I think the the thing the thing that I can't I can't cross the bridge that I can't cross here is Kyle. You were assuming the Titans mitts operate as though they were like a pair of hands, like they are mitts. So like you didn't fuse the claw shot into your arms. Yeah, maybe he did. The way that I I understand this to work right is that you put the mitts on and the mitts are attached to your claw shot so to yeah. me that means that like yeah i think it's pretty reasonable that you could grab a heavy thing and pull it back towards you because you have the mitts on but i don't think the mitts inherently make the claw shot that much stronger <laughs> no 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 it's reversed the the mitts do in fact make the claw shot that much stronger Kyle's human hands wielding the yeah. claw shot do not transfer to the strength of the mitts. Yeah. So you're, it's, okay. it's all of the above. No, let's, let's, it's let's look at it this way. It's definitely not both. It let's can't look at be it both. this way. Let's look at it this Why way. Why can't it be both? Because oh, you Kyle say so, say Matt. Both. Stop, stop. Everybody stop. Okay, <laughs> listen, we're going to break this down. So if I have two old people uh, grabby grabby things, right? Grabby and, I try to, yeah. and I try to pick up a, like a glass, I can pick it up because it's, it's not very much weight. But if I try to pick up like 40 pounds... Right. Like it's really hard because I can't I don't have the leverage. I don't have enough strength to have the leverage. If I put on the Titans mitts, therefore, now I can pick up a lot more things. So I can pick up that 40 pound weight with my old people claw grams. But the old people claw hand doesn't magically become a hand. Yes. Yeah, that's what I've Boom. been saying since we crashed landed on this island. Is that does not become <laughs> so, a hand. <laughs> let me tell you how how I glued these things together and how it how okay. it works. There's two pairs of Titans mitts. I am wearing the mitts <laughs> and have glued the claw shot to them. Okay. Therefore, I get the super strength from wearing the mitt, but also being glued to it, the claw shot is also super strong. It's all oh, of the above. Oh, it's all of the above. It's all of the above. Okay. So you get all the powers. That's what we were yeah. So I get all it's, the powers. It's, it's, <laughs> it's a Dracula, Dracula situation that we, we found came ourselves back to in on this Dracula. island. Oh, well, <laughs> uh, beans, y'all, I got real bad news. <laughs> As it turns out, the elder gods who watch over this mystical island require tribute in the form of blood sacrifice. Ah, dang. So here are the rules. Three of you enter, but only one may leave this fight to the death. Tell me how you emerge victorious over your competition using your fused items. So we've already <laughs> talked about Reinhardt and, and King DDD, and that's great. But we've all played Halo 3, and some of us have even played a Fallout game. The Gravity Hammer and Super Sledge, respectively, are A tier in combat. You can't, in Halo 3, just roll into Ghost Town and ignore the Gravity Hammer Spartan. The map Heretic is basically owned by anyone with the hammer, unless... You know, one of you guys have an overshield and a shotgun. And don't even get me started about the power of a rocket-fueled hammer in the 30-plus years of wasteland fighting. It's just easy. A remote beetle shield and a big slappy hand that may or may not actually work like we're talking about <laughs> cannot contain the power of a jet-fueled smashing stick. And I want to drive the point home. I, I got to admit, I packed these two items because I was worried that something like this would happen. <laughs> and I want you to know <laughs> Todd sabotaged the plane so I that did. he could be right. So yeah. he could be justified well, in bringing his rocket. Well, no, no, it wasn't. It wasn't that I was worried that, that I was going to have to fight you two who also happened to bring two specific things in case this happened. Mm -hmm. It's that I packed my my hammer, my Megaton hammer and my my rocket so I could attach them in case I had to fend myself off from 30 to 50 feral hogs. And instead, I've got you two. And, and I think it's going to be the same. I think I've got this handled. I got to say, I thought you were going to say fend off a smoke monster, and I wasn't ready for 30 <laughs> yeah. to 50 feral hogs. I knew that he was going 30 to, four, 30 to 50 feral hogs. It's, it's, a larger, it's a larger than average polar bear. No, there will not be any sort of conclusion to that storyline. Please continue. <laughs> I just want to throw out, I think you could only fend off 10 to 20 feral hogs with a rocket hammer at best, but we're splitting hairs. You'll get overwhelmed well, by those hogs. I've got yeah. terrible news for you. Your two hands. Your two hands. <laughs> My two super strong, super stretchy uh, hands. The verdict's Todd. still out on that. Matt. Yeah, Andrew, it's easy. I have a freaking laser beam, man. It's a laser beam. It's like a death laser beam. It's never once been attracted to Until beam. it gets a little cloudy. That. 
until it gets a little cloudy. <laughs> you better hope it's not raining when the feral hogs are feral hogs nocturnal. Hang on. We're not talking it? about feral hogs. We're talking about blood for the blood god, God. <laughs> and you know, if we're doing sacrifices to the blood god, there's going to be some infernal orb, sun or otherwise, in the sky. And I will redirect its rays. He's got a point. <laughs> Does he? Does he have oh, a point? Matt, does. Matt, terrible news. Feral hogs are mostly active in the early morning. That's not peak sunlight. Nobody's asking for hog facts. Uh, <laughs> Andrew was asking for hog Take facts. Take your hog Please facts continue. back to South Carolina. No, look, I have a death ray, Andrew. I have a death ray when that I can pilot with my mind, that I can pilot with my mind and do not need to be within range of Todd's super hammer. I might be in range of Kyle's grabby hands, but again, unsure on how that works. So I'm not too. <laughs> At the very least, I can keep slapping your beetle away with my grabby hand. Just push, go like can't, can't wait. Get can close I get that? Enough. That that push. again? Yeah, that was good. Push. Great. Yeah, Kyle, how are you gonna, Mister Fantastic, your way through this? Um, I'm glad you brought up Mr. Fantastic, Andrew, sure. because that's exactly what I'm gonna do. Mm-hmm. You may note, Mr. Fantastic fights crime on a regular basis so if i, I have to, noticed that. so does thor he's a god my weapon makes me a god you you yeah. are leaving a few key aspects of <laughs> thor off the table to make that claim todd might also point out this power is strikingly similar to spider-man another hero um i'm just gonna gonna slap todd and andrew away from me until they get too tired and then like from a distance, like rip their heart out of their chests and offer it to the blood god. If we're doing a blood god sacrifice here, I'm doing yeah, like that's a, what we're doing. a Kali Ma, like, yeah. but from a distance. And but, I mean, it's kind of like a pick your own blood god, you know, yeah. choose your own blood god adventure. I normally wouldn't correct such a such a minor slip up, but you did just say you were going to rip Andrew's heart out of his chest and not Matt's. Oh, Ooh, and that's, that's really not a tough for this answer. I mean, yeah. oh God. I meant Andrew, Andrew, sure. our friend that woke us when the plane crashed. Yeah. And said that we had to go back. Um, for what it's worth, <laughs> I will, ex- deserves it. I will accept it because the, tri- the contrivance that I've built here is that all of us need to die. So it's yeah. fine. It yeah. plays. Yeah. Great. Um, <laughs> here we are. Here we are. Well, we're going to take a break because I've got a lot to process both mentally and physically. When we get back, I want each of you, now that you have sacrificed the blood for the blood god, I need each of you to take all of the blood stained fused items from your slain best friends and fuse all of them together to one mega rocket fueled concoction to get off this island. And we will take those answers right after this. How well do you know your video game lovers? Have you ever wondered how your video game bays stack up against all the other delectable digital dates? I'm Genesis, the girl whose motto in life is love, laugh, tequila. And on Two Girls, One Ship, we analyze, rate, and review all that the world of video game romances has to offer. And I'm Vervada, the hopeless romantic cat lady and lifelong gamer. But you should know that our podcast centers on character and romance analysis and doesn't shy away from exploring the fun of physical connection. Or from the deep emotional connections built between two characters, using specific in-game dialogue and the overall narrative journey. So join the two girls, one ship, shipsters, and remember, beauty is in the eye of the controller. And we're back. All right. That super secret bonus question, once again, is how are you going to fuse all three of the items from your slain comrades together (laughs) to get off this island? We'll start with Todd. Yeah, so I've also been watching a lot of Yellow Jackets. uh, Season two just ended. That would have been a good good one to use for this contrivance. Yeah, so so the reason why I say that is because I have killed my companions here and I've eaten them and I've run out of food. Sure. Um, I've I've hammered... (laughs) <laughs> yeah, sorry. I've, I've I've hammered too many trees. The trees are no longer bearing fruit. That's on me. And I've got nothing. But what I do have is a bug shield and some hands that extend and can lift really heavy things if I want. And I've got a hammer that's got a rocket attached. So here's what we're gonna do. Little non-conventional. So follow me here. I'm going to ride the hammer. I'm going to. <laughs> I'm going to. I am going to. 
put the hammer business end down into the water rocket boost myself across the water that's important <laughs> and and here's the thing that's that's gonna work how how's the hammer not gonna s immediately sink to the bottom of the ocean same question well how do planes not fall out of the sky <laughs> oh you were ready um, for that lift one. <laughs> they, they, they generate lift because of the curvature of their wings i could go into like i'll just aim i'll just thing. aim up a little bit <laughs> Anyway, that's not the worst thing that we've said today. So that's that's one end of it things. So be. now I've got I've got these I've got these big strong grabby hands, right? So here's Holy what I need shit. to do. I guess the 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 for some reason the beetles are controlled by my mind. I'm still not totally that's sure. Part the the that's part of the game. That's not me. They, 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 uh, like, yeah. In the game you go into the POV of the beetle, yeah, so it's right. kind of weird, like you control it with your brain. But the but the beetle is like a thing on my arm. You warg it. You warg the beetle. Yeah, well, it yeah. like attaches to a thing on your arm, like yeah, a sure. Yu-Gi-Oh dual disc, obviously. It's a, it's a familiar. Great, so so I'm going to actually attach the, the beetle to one of the grabby hands, that so I can extend it real far before I activate the beetle. And then the beetle with the shield is gonna extend and just spin a bunch in the morning sun. I'm doing a hand thing. <laughs> you can't see it. And that's how I'm gonna signal for help. And so while I'm rocketing just across the water, a constant lighthouse beam high above me is just spinning so that I can be found. And then once I'm found, I'll just use my other free grabby hand and pull myself to that thing. Or pull that thing to me, actually. If it's a big boat, I think I guess I can just pull it to me. <laughs> yeah. And they can just deal with that. How wow. long does the engine on your rocket hammer last? Um, how long does the engine on your bug shield last? Well, that's a that's a time thing, not a like it is a it only has a couple of seconds. But you're mm. talking about riding your hammer out into the ocean. Then I'll activate it again. I know how this works. <laughs> it's fine. And if I he'll, and if I start, he'll wait a few I, seconds while it recharges, yeah. and then and if I and yeah. if I start to sink, I'll just jettison myself upward first. I, the, the use case is endless. The image of of you riding a megaton hammer like yeah. a jet ski mm -hmm. is <laughs> yeah really good. <laughs> it's really really good and yeah, stupid. No, this works. I feel good about this. Perfect. Andrew, I like the way that you said Megaton, like it's a city and not yeah, a combination John Megaton. of the words. Well, Megaton. I mean, <laughs> that's another another Fallout reference. Uh, Matt. Yeah, Andrew. So this is easy. Let me again <laughs> go it? back to the weird question that Todd just asked. It is. I've already got it figured out. The weird question Todd just asked. How long does the beetle thing last? Answer, not all that long. And it's not like a distance thing it's a time thing it can just only fly for so long before it comes back to you and everybody knows there's only one way off a deserted island it's a boat passes by you catch their attention they come and get you literally no other way off a deserted island so what we're gonna do once we see that boat out there beetles probably not gonna be able to make it to the boat that's okay we can solve that problem we're gonna climb to the top of the tallest mountain which I know exists because Todd carved a hole into it earlier. We're going to climb to the top of the tallest mountain. It's fair. And then we're going to stand with the claw shots and like way down on the beach is going to be the hammer. And we're going to reach down and grab the hammer because what we need is whip. So we're going to like reel back like a big old golf swing. And then we're just going to like from the top of a mountain poo, and smack the beetle out like the whole way into the ocean um by the boat and then the beetle will fly and get their attention they'll come and save us easy done no problem i think you glossed over how that's easy fine no problem very quickly <laughs> i mean he said it was easy and fine and no problem mm, no you're right you're right you don't think there's any kind of like distance requirement for the psychic link to the beetle you don't think you're just gonna like golf putt a beetle out onto a boat and they'll see it and be like well, that's weird. And then, like, keep boating on. I, there's never been anything in the game before about distance thing or whatever you said. And no, they're going to see the beetle. But but you haven't played many of these games? No, but I read the Wikipedia page about the thing I'm talking about. Mm. Okay. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Um, I think I think what you missed, Matt, is since I won the battle, I leveled the whole island. There's no mountain to stand on anymore. <laughs> <laughs> you have nothing but my empire of dirt. Uh, Kyle. All right, Andrew. So here is how I'm actually going to use these three things to get us off the island. Using the Megaton Hammer and the Beetle in conjunction with my super strong grabby arms, I am going to build a gigantic seesaw is the best image I have to think of, but a catapult <laughs> using these objects. 
um, I'm going to strap the beetle to my back and using the grabby arms, pick up the rocket hammer, get it way up into the sky as high as I can and activate the rocket and swing it down on the other end of the seesaw, launching me out over the ocean. <laughs> Super far. I will then use the beetle strapped to my back to control my descent long enough until I find a boat or other <laughs> land and land on the boat or other island or land. If I land on a boat, great. I'm on a boat, I'm saved. If I land on another island, repeat as one, needed. One until, island closer. One yeah. island closer, repeat as needed until I have found either mainland or a civilization that can get me to mainland. A response truly in the spirit of <laughs> Breath of the Wild and Tears of the Kingdom, for sure. Yes. <laughs> so since Matt and I both brought very sound science, I have to question yours, mm -hmm. Kyle. True. And that is in, in two ways. One, can the bug lift a person? Definitely it's not. It's not lift. It's it's slowing my descent. I, I accept the fact that I'm not mm -hmm. generating lift with the bug. I'm just... Fair slowing my own descent so i care the the bug seems to have one specific speed i don't think it really like speeds up a lot and so when you're at terminal velocity and you activate bug um <laughs> what happens to your momentum it's slow i mean i slow down it's it's functioning more like a parachute or like mm. like a glider one of those like like flying squirrel suits that like thrill seekers will use. I'm not trying to fly or stop immediately. Pun aside, this bug's doing a lot of lifting. <laughs> the bug it's not, physics it's, are out it's, there. It's slowing. It's slowing my descent, Todd. Like I said, I know I'm not flying with this bug strapped to my back, but I'm falling at a much more controlled rate of speed. I mean, we've all put some silly things out here, so I'll leave it alone. I just like the <laughs> mental image of terminal velocity, and suddenly you're now going a mile an hour. Yeah, due to bug physics. Sure. If the bug could stop me, like slow me down to that that quickly midair, we're talking some great some great physics I can take advantage of. Well, it's all ancient technology that no one understands. I could activate it before I'm at terminal velocity. I could activate it like at the apex of my toss over the ocean, and then. I'm not at terminal velocity at all. I can just like go straight forever according to your weird physics. Will you be doing this in the sunlight and will the shield light you aflame as you activate bug power? Potentially doing this in the sunlight, I will have the shield aimed away from the sun hmm. so I do not light myself on fire because it does not generate its own beam. You have to reflect the sun <laughs> to get the, the death ray, supposed death ray. <laughs> People are talking about death rays a lot. Wow. Well, much like my favorite NPC, Addison, we've all been marveled by physics today. <laughs> so why don't you all three give me your closing statements in all three of these incredibly airtight, <laughs> hard to disprove arguments? Yeah, um, this is pretty simple. So Matt's big thing is light fires fight bad things if you have to. I don't know. Matt didn't make the 30 to 50 feral hogs argument, but I feel like death ray could have been helpful there. As far as lighting things on fire goes, literal rocket. <laughs> Got a rocket. That's just gonna, I assume, set something. Listen, if I get through leveling a whole island and I haven't started a fire, then that's just a big surprise. A grace of God, yeah. yeah. Kyle's thing, moving big thing to you, reaching things hard to reach, negative. Uh, big, big hammer with rocket will take me take me to or bring thing to me one way or another. I'll leave you with this, Andrew. You could have a big dipper going up and down all around the bends. You could have a bumper car bumping. The amusement never ends. What's he referencing here? I don't, don't want to be your sledgehammer. Oh, it's the, why don't it's you call wow. my name? Oh, okay. it's the Peter Gabriel Let me be. song. Yeah, yeah. that's your a decent hammer. Yeah. This will be my testimony. Yeah. I'll give it to him. He's still going, though. That's kind of weird. He's still that's going. Fun. I just, that's, that's it. All right, Matt. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, Andrew, in the year 2000, we as a society all reckoned with maybe the first time, I don't have another example previous, that a movie made us fall in love and feel empathy towards an inanimate object just to have them fridged three-fourths of the way through the movie. There's no way <laughs> 2000's Castaway is the first time a movie made us fall in love with an inanimate object, Matt. That's 70 years of cinema history to pull from, I am certain. All I'm saying is that we all know how we felt inside. 
when Tom Hanks lost Wilson in the ocean. And I am offering you not only something that can get things you can't reach, not only something that can start fire, a mother freaking death ray, and also <laughs> that same kind of like empathy towards an inanimate thing with a face. Matt, what quick question. Point of order. Hit me. What did you name your shield friend? You know, what I didn't ironic get that name far. like Wilson did you give your shield friend? Uh God damn, I'm my point my, has been made. I'm Andrew. racking my brain for shield puns so hard, and I have nothing. I'm so sorry. Perry, Kyle, what a I gambit. named him Perry. It's Perry. It's Perry. Andrew, all I am offering you today to help survive on this island is the ability to reach anything you need to reach and pick it up and bring it towards you, and also send it away from you and put it wherever you need to. It's the most useful tool I can offer because it does a little bit of everything. Todd brought a rocket hammer, which I will admit has some very practical uses on a deserted island. It is not the Swiss army knife, one size fits all tool that he claims it to be. And I will also admit that while Matt, um, a flying death ray is pretty useful, not having that death ray when it's a little overcast or at night does hamper its effectiveness a bit when my super strong, super stretchy arms can do their super stretchy, super strong thing at any time of day <laughs> or night. Good. Well, I am so interested to find out who, which one of the three of you made it back from this island that I am going to scour the local South Carolina news to see if anyone has washed up on the beaches of Myrtle. <laughs> <laughs> Myrtle's beaches. The beaches of Myrtle. <laughs> Please go around while I scour the newspapers. Please go around and give some good vibes. Hey, this was really good and dumb. I hate this. <laughs> this and I love this really all at the same good time. And dumb. Um, it's just a really good reminder how the Zelda items go from like functional to banana sandwiches so quickly. Real quick. Boomerang to like physics defying tool. In two two treasure chests. Like, I mean, there probably could have been an argument that like the Sheikah slate that allows you to just move shit with that yeah. you want to move wherever yeah. you want to move it yeah. is also good. But this was very good. Matt, the mirror shield is rad. I've not played the, the bug item game. Mirror shield is rad. I didn't realize it had been in so many games. However, I do remember in Soul Calibur, if you played as Link with the mirror shield, it was just a real hell of a time to have to deal with them because... Not only could he reflect things, it also hurt you when you got too close. So mirror shield is a good get. Making death rays that are controlled via your mind on a beetle, inspired. <laughs> I I uh, wouldn't uh, wouldn't have guessed that one. Yours I had to look up. Kyle, love both of yours. Obviously, I tried to push for hookshot again. I still stand that the sole item by itself that is the most useful on an island is probably the hookshot. Because it can injure things and grab things. Yeah. Giving it the ability to, to grab things, but better. Fantastic. And the mental image of them being fully extended and picking up something way too heavy <laughs> and being wobbly. Also very, very good. Yeah, Todd, I really love that you looked at this and said, hmm, the problem I need to solve is I'm on a deserted island. The answer I have is mega hammer. Like, yeah. I love that. <laughs> That's great. That's excellent problem solving. I also really like that your main point of reference game for the mirror shield is Soul Calibur. That yeah. is very interesting. <laughs> Decidedly not a Legend of Zelda entry. Yeah, right. very interesting and also very me like. So I really appreciate that. Kyle, I agree with what Todd said. Like the hook shot is a very good thing to have. The double hook shot, I mean, why not have two? And then just the concept of they're strong now is great. <laughs> Still a little hung up on like where in the equation the mitts go. Do the mitts go at the back or do the mitts go at the front? Really not sure. But like I, I really like that a lot. And I think it's a fun answer. They're magic mitts. So no matter where they are, you get the magic. I still like my answer is there's two sets of mitts, right? Kyle's wearing a set of mitts and a set of mitts are on the claws. I can't make this more clear. If we, if we really want to game it out, we could do one hand 
has a no. mitt on the hand, and the other oh. hand has a mitt on the claw. So one's <laughs> one's for pulling, one's for punching, yeah. one's for pulling, <laughs> one's for punching. Yeah. You effectively at that point have a pair of tongs and a spatula, right? Yeah, like you have one you can pick up, and one that can grab. <laughs> now that you've said spatula, all I can think about is Kyle pulling back his claws and clicking them together, and go, they work. <laughs> they, they do work, Todd. <laughs> like a like a dad at a barbecue. God. Todd, like like Matt, I am just impressed that you saw Zelda items on a deserted island and thought, hammer that hammers better. And <laughs> like I can't pull that apart too too much further than we already have, because like a real a rocket hammer is a rocket hammer. And like you are absolutely gonna find some some real world uses for a rocket hammer. Matt, a drone with a flamethrower on it that also can grab things is a very good answer. I had to take away use at night to make it something I could compete with because like, yeah, a drone that can grab things on its own is going to be very useful in a any situation. And a drone that shoots fire is also going to be useful in a lot of situations. So good inspired combo. Thanks, man. Man, this was fun and dumb and stupid. And much like Tears of the Kingdom, I did not know what to expect coming in, but holy shit, I've had a good time coming out of it. So I have some news. I did come across a local news station report. At Myrtle's Beach? At at, at Myrtle's. The beaches Myrtle's, of Myrtle's. Mm, beaches yeah. of Myrtle. <laughs> the cliffs of Myrtle. And, <laughs> it's my and, favorite Eric Clapton song. <laughs> <laughs> and... Uh, <laughs> <laughs> oh, that's why it's funny. not right it's it's funny on two levels so this is this is goldfinger by superman kind of level <laughs> so i i tuned into a report of a of a kind of a man on the street situation the reporter was just like looking out on on the beach and in the distance a man riding what looked to be a jet ski wait no it's a giant hammer <laughs> somehow Perfect. made it back to the cliffs of myrtle and with that said todd if you can believe it or not is our winner because i don't know i like chaos and that was the <laughs> silliest dumbest answer so here we go good job todd i only left the island because there's nothing left of the island <laughs> <laughs> he only left the island so he could level the cliffs of Myrtle. <laughs> <laughs> Todd, Todd was not trapped on the island. The island was trapped there with Todd. <laughs> I saw opportunity on that island. <laughs> well, everybody, thanks for listening in to debate this. You yourself at home can follow along with the arguments on Twitter, Facebook, and Instagram at Debate This Cast or on our website at debatethiscast.com. Hey. 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 Do you want more? Hey. Do you, uh, do you want more Debate This content, but are also cool with paying money for it? Well, if you answered yes to both of those things with equal enthusiasm, may I recommend checking out our Patreon at patreon.com slash debate this cast. For only $5 a month, you will get unlimited access to our premium feed, which includes ad-free episodes of Debate This and Flavor Text, and you'll be able to listen to all current and backlogged episodes of The Office Drones, our weird D&D podcast about office workers doing a fantasy time heist that the most recent episode definitely has three <laughs> Michael Bolton songs laced in. <laughs> Why is that? Well, check it out. Tune in and check it out. We have only a few episodes left until we transition to our next long form series, which is called Deconstructed, which will be a Disney Channel original movie watch along podcast. That said, until next time, I am Andrew Henderson. I'm Todd. Legit question for rural Hylians. How do I kill the 30 to 50 feral bacoblins <laughs> that run into Cake Rico <laughs> within three to five minutes while my small kids play? Thomas. I'm Matt, blood for the blood bod, cold. <laughs> and I'm Kyle, riding my rocket hammer jet ski into the sunset, Harper. And we're saying thanks for debating with us. And if you think we're wrong, you can come fight us behind the swing sets, nerds. <laughs> <laughs>